Hello, I'm the Eternal Newbie. The extra L is for Ledger Domain. Ledger Domain, as in magic. Because this week, we're wrapping up our look at homebrew cantrips with a couple more wacky ones. If you didn't see part one, I'll throw a card up right around here somewhere, and also link it in the description. In that part, we focus on cantrips that were improved versions of leveled spells like Flight and Healing. This week, we're going to toss all that aside and go with cantrips that have no equivalents. Mainly because spells don't go that high. That's right, I've chosen cantrips that could be considered more powerful than Wish itself. Also, uh, fair warning, I... Well, let me put it this way. I had a great idea. Like, really great, in my opinion. But to actually put it into practice, I had to... Well, I had to sing. And if you've ever stopped by for one of my streams, you probably know my voice is best described as a cross between nails on a chalkboard and, uh, death. So I am legally obligated in six states to warn you that there is singing in this video. Really bad singing. Now, I wasn't really around when modern cantrips were first introduced in 3rd edition, but I am sure the fan base embraced the change with the open-mindedness that has long been a mark of nerddom. We love change! Wait, what's that? People reacted exactly like Chris Chan when they changed Sonic's arm color? Alright, actually, that's not surprising. And honestly, some of the main cantrips are a bit overpowered. Looking at you, Guidance! But they have nothing. Nothing on what we're going to see today. Our first cantrip is called... Dracolich. If you are unfamiliar with Dracoliches, they are a combination of two of D&D's most powerful monsters, dragons and liches. Now most people think a Dracolich curse when a dragon decides, you know what, being a flying machine of death is nice and all, but it's just not enough for me. I need more. Then it'll tie its soul to a phylactery and become undead and more powerful. But most people are wrong. That's just what the Dracoliches want you to think. Because the truth is so much more insidious. This is how Dracoliches are actually created. Oh, and once again, I'm really sorry for the singing. Here's the story of an evil dragon who was bringing up three very wicked wormlings. They all had hordes of gold like their mother, the youngest one cursed kings. Here's the story of a lich named Rendo who was busy with three ghouls of his own. They were four undead living all together, yet they were all alone. Till the one day when this lich met this dragon And we knew it was much more than glitches That this group would somehow form a family That's the way we became the Draco Liches The Draco Liches The Draco Liches That's the way we became the Draco Liches Oh wow, you're uh... You're still here. Guess I have to finish this video. Did not honestly see that one coming. So, uh, let's look at an example of a Draco Lich. Yeah, that'll work. As you can see, they have all the powers of a dragon with some Lich powers thrown in for good measure. Also, in this example, I'm using an adult dragon Draco Lich. The ancient Draco Liches, they are something to behold. The problem with this cantrip is Drag liches are not known for playing well with others, so while you certainly can summon pet drag lich at will, it probably won't work out the way you want. I would totally allow this at my table. I'd give it out for free. Oh, you want to use your cantrip summon drag lich? Okay, that's fine. You summon a drag lich and he eats you. Anything else? But it says pet. He has to do what I say. Uh, you would think that, but you know what else are pets? Cats. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Sorry, newbie singing does that to me. You know, I have met a few Dracoliches in my time, and trust me, they are all giant jerk faces. Don't look so surprised. All us D&D monsters get together at least once a year. We call it Moncon. Three years ago, I was on a panel with a few other monsters, you know, Dracula, Dragon, Beholder, and 
a stupid Dragolich. That jerk wouldn't let any of the rest of us get a word in. Like this smoking Yanti asked me, specifically me, a real suggested question about how I unwind her after a hard day of villainy and kidnapping princesses. You know, standard flirting. And this Draco dick answers before I could. So he ends up hanging out with her for that night instead of me. Worst of all, she was the best kind of Yanti. You know, human on top, snake on the bottom. Ended up being okay, though. I went out drinking with the Beholder. Now those guys can party. Have you ever been sitting at the D&D table, playing, and thought to yourself, you know, Advantage is okay. I mean, it's nice and all, but I could still technically fail. I think we need something better. If that sounds familiar, then have I got the cantrip for you. It's called Lucky Star, and it gives you, the player, excellent odds to succeed on any roll. It says, any die rolled by you or an ally can be re-rolled, ignoring any penalty or disadvantage. Instead, roll four die and choose the best result. So, triple advantage on a roll for you or any ally. Pretty neat, right? Now, I am no mathematician, but I did pass the third grade, so I feel confident I can figure this out. Let's say you need to roll a 15 or higher to succeed. Normally, normal roll, it's only a 30% chance of passing. With advantage, you can bump that sucker up to 51% chance of succeeding. By adding two more die for a total of four, you can get a, uh... Wow, 417% chance of passing? Does that sound right to you? Eh, maybe I forget to carry one or something. But that's not important. What is important is, this thing's a reaction, so you can use it any time during the round. I am kind of confused by the asterisk though. See it? It says, which you take when you or an ally rolls a die. Seems kind of redundant seeing as how a reaction is set off by a trigger and there's nothing saying dice rolling can't be that trigger. Like why would they even put it in there? I have a theory. It could be bunnies. Wait, no, sorry, wrong channel. My theory is the author meant for you to be able to use this anytime you or an ally roll a die. Like it's more of a legendary action than a reaction. I could be wrong. But do you really think someone that's going to make a cantrip that gives triple advantage only limited to once a round? For all of you rubes out there who are unfamiliar with the presence of greatness you are presently presented with, allow me to enlighten you. I am a world-class D&D brain. All the most famous DMs come to me for ideas and proofreading. Now, I don't like to brag, but before a certain M.M. talked to me, he wanted to call his homebrew class Banana Slinger. I told him, dude, why not use guns instead? And the rest is history. But where I really shine is cantrip creation. I'm quite simply the greatest ever. You may remember me from such cantrips as Fart Cloud, Booger Bomb, Reverse Cowgirl, Frying Dutchman, and of course, Rings of Uranus. Now I've come out with my best yet. My Spanish Armada. My Spruce Goose. The Titanic of cantrips. No, no, no. The Ford Pinto of cantrips. I call it simply La Winner. You cast it, and you win D&D. No fuss, no muss, no puss. <laughs> That's for my next cantrip. So those were the Dracolich and Lucky Star's cantrips. Two real winners in my book, but what do you think? And how did you like this video? What kind of videos would you like to see going forward? Let me know with a like or a comment, or tell me anything. Seriously, anything. Comments are how I pretend I have friends. If you're new around here, thank you for stopping by and how's about subscribing? I promise I rarely sing in my videos, and it would be so much appreciated. Speaking of appreciation, Thank you so much for watching, and as always, play your character. Don't let your character play you.